Sunk in shallow water in a popular local diving spot, the wreck of HMS Hermes is one you would expect to be well known. An aircraft carrier that was sunk in combat, and in shallow enough water that she can be dived on without special equipment. That is the kind of thing that generally gets the attention of shipwreck explorers and more casual divers alike. However, Hermes is largely ignored if you don't already know her wreck was found. For example, if you're the type to use Wikipedia as your only source, you might not even be aware her wreck was ever located. It is not once mentioned in her article, other than a couple links at the very bottom of the page. And books or documentaries don't often make mention of it either, even though her wreck was rediscovered 21 years ago. After first being located all the way back in the 1960s. Of course, part of this is down to the local instability in Sri Lanka. It was this very instability that had her wreck fade from interest between her initial discovery and her rediscovery. That instability might, ironically enough, have protected her wreck as well. From illegal salvagers, in this case, though I would argue that her relative lack of spotlight is also helping matters in that regard. In any event, I'll give a quick overview of her sinking and two discoveries before jumping into the wreck itself. First, as I went over in my last video on Hermes, the unfortunate aircraft carrier was struck by Japanese air attack on April 9th, 1942. Forty or so bombs slammed into her, setting fires and starting uncontrollable flooding. This damage would cause Hermes to slip beneath the waves, where she would promptly be forgotten and lost to time for some 25 years. A sad fate for what is, by design, the world's first purpose-built aircraft carrier. Regardless, at the end of those 25 years, Hermes would be rediscovered for the first time. A local legend in the scuba diving community, Rodney Jonkless, found her wreck in 1967, apparently without any gear or special equipment at that. For several years after this, he would continue to visit the site until, as previously mentioned, the Sri Lankan Civil War made it too dangerous. Jonkless and local fishermen, who had started taking advantage of prime fishing by the wreck, had to abandon the area. While the fishermen returned in relatively short order, the wreck would not be visited again until the dawn of the 21st century. Another diver, Felician Fernando, would embark on his own search for the lost carrier. Through the assistance of a witness to her sinking, and a former commander of the Eastern Naval Area, he set about his search. Not an easy task when the British Admiralty charts were wrong on where she sank, as well as a lack of easy landmarks to base the search off of. Nonetheless, on April 15, 2002, Fernando found his target. He dived down about 60 meters, 197 feet, and promptly landed on a box of ammunition. Which is, I suppose, one way to know you were diving on a military shipwreck of some description. It didn't take long to see the ship herself, encrusted by coral and other sea life, and surrounded by fish. Yet, for her age and shallow depth, remarkably intact. As anyone who looks at shipwrecks could tell you, shallow water wrecks typically last far less time than deep water wrecks. Sea life will overtake the wreck and gradually wear away at paint, steel, and everything else. Fishermen can often, as well, drag their nets over the wrecks, further degrading them. It is because they avoid all of these issues that wrecks like Hornet are so well preserved, even after so many years underwater. For her part, Hermes does buck this trend to some extent, though that isn't to say she's in perfect shape. Parts of the hull have clearly collapsed, and her flight deck, such as it can be seen, is destroyed. And her bow, once so sharp and distinctive, is clearly collapsing in on itself. And yet, in spite of all the growth and rust, the wreck remains identifiable as HMS Hermes. Now, let's take a look at some of those key identifying features. Probably the most immediately recognizable bits to show this is Hermes are her superstructure and secondary battery. As I went over in my video on the ship, Hermes had a rather distinctive island superstructure, right down to the massive tripod that looked almost comically large on such a relatively small ship. The spotting top on that mast is, today, 
one of the most commonly seen images on her wreck. This isn't terribly surprising, because Hermes began to capsize as she went under. The relatively shallow depth didn't allow her to completely roll over, but the ship still landed heavily on her port side, pushing her superstructure out and away as she settled. She's very nearly completely upside down, with only that superstructure really keeping her at an angle. And because of the combination of being nearly completely overturned, and the superstructure being so distinctive in its design, it's one of the first things that divers gravitate towards. Especially the spotting top itself, which is almost unique in its design on shipwrecks. Certainly on shipwrecks that are actually shallow enough to dive. It is not the only recognizable part, however, nor the only popular location on the wreck. As mentioned, her secondary battery is also popular. Popular enough, in fact, that it's the thumbnail for this video. This is one of her 5.5 inch secondary guns, which were the entire reason for such a massive tripod in the first place. Hermes carried six of these weapons, three on each side. With how she landed on the bottom, only those on the starboard side are really visible in the modern day. Even so, this particular gun makes for a striking image. Encrusted by sea life it may be, the weapon still sticks out as if to engage an enemy it never saw the chance to fight. These weapons are one of the primary reasons for Hermes being such a popular local attraction. That aside, Hermes is a curious case of a World War II shipwreck with only a handful of weapons to actually look at. She was carrying no planes when she sank, so there's none of those to find. And the ship only had the six 5.5 inch guns alongside three 4-inch anti-aircraft guns when she went under. Those 4-inch guns are also visible, though they're in much worse shape than their larger counterparts. This is also relatively typical, as these things go, for those who saw the Roma video. The smaller weapons tend to corrode at a faster rate than the larger ones. A munitions box, open and resting nearby, is arguably in better shape than the guns themselves. Not helping matters in the case of Hermes, there's the added problem of the guns being mounted on the deck, which is both overturned and falling apart. Still, the 4-inch guns are recognizable, which is more than can be said for other parts of the wreck. I have not found a single picture of her flight deck, for example, not even the parts that would be visible. Descriptions of diving the wreck state that it's mostly gone, which would seem to be the case from the lack of images. The same story goes for her bow, which, as mentioned previously, is collapsing in on itself. This has exposed part of her interior to the open ocean, which has admittedly given one of the more... famous pictures of the wreck. Though not the most flattering one, in this case, being as it's a set of toilets. I grant you this is not something you normally see on a World War II shipwreck, so Hermes has that going for her, but the fact remains. A set of toilets is not normally what you dive on a shipwreck to take a look at. That said, there aren't many more identifiable bits on her hull. The carrier's propellers, or screws, either term works here, are visible at her stern, but the stern itself is falling apart. Like the area that was, in her original design, the slipway for seaplanes. Which is a shame, since that would have made a useful entry point into the hull for those brave enough to do so. Instead, the best interior diving is around her superstructure area, though I have found little in the way of images for this. Which does bring us to the end for the wreck of HMS Hermes. She's a popular local diving spot, with some interesting guns and superstructure. But her relative lack of notoriety outside the diving community, but her relative lack of notoriety outside the diving community, leaves her with no sonar images, and precious few images outside the big, impressive bits. I will take a lack of images, though, because that lack of notoriety has likely been the only thing keeping her wreck from being torn apart. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.